Quadratic inequalities pre-calculus. Solve the quadratic inequality x squared minus 4x plus 3 less than or equal to 0. We did a uh, much simpler version of these problems in Algebra 2. Uh, we're going to show you a whole different way to do these. Um, the first thing we need to do is find what we call the critical numbers we can eat or the roots We need to find the roots. That's the lingo we've been using. So let's stick with that What are the roots of this function now? How can I find the roots of this? I have a couple of options. I could factor it um, Which in this case would be pretty simple. Um, I could Do completing the square. I could take a look at the graph on my calculator I have it typed in here already. If I hit zoom Get rid of that zoom six um, and I could do the left bound, right bound, and then left bound, right bound again to get these two numbers. Now, this is a basic example, so I think what you'll, uh, sorry, wrong file, what you'll see here is factoring is, is probably the easiest way to do this one. Uh, the factors here are x minus 3 and x minus 1, and, and don't worry about the sign for now. We'll save this for later. Um, think of it as equals temporarily to find the roots. So first, find roots. First, find roots. Uh, and if you solve it, you get x equals 3 and x equals 1. Uh, so we know it's going to be 1 and 3. Uh, what you need to under uh, decide is, is it between 1 and 3 or, you know, that whole uh, between or away scenario? Like it could have been uh, one of two options pretty much can happen here. It can be 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3, because we have an equal to bar here, uh, which in set notation would look like this, 1, 3. Uh, or it could have been uh, the away scenario, where it's x is less than or equal to 1, or x is greater than or equal to 3. Now, we haven't used set notation yet with or, so let me take a second and explain this. First of all, just this, x is less than 1, we've talked about that. That would look like negative infinity to 1. Infinity always gets a parenthesis, but in this case, 1 would get a bracket because it's equal to. The or symbol in set notation is a u. And then you would have the next set over here. It would be a bracket for 3, for x is greater than or equal to 3, is 3 to infinity. And again, infinity would have a parenthesis. Now, that option isn't even here. Um, um, I think it's, you know, you could probably guess it's going to be this. But um, you will have questions where this is the answer. So I wanted to take a moment on, on, on looking at that. Um, so when it's an or scenario, uh, this is how it's going to be u between usually negative infinity to one root and then or the other root to positive infinity. And then the bracket parenthesis, you know, just like set notation, depends if it's equal to or not, and so on. Um, now, if both of these answers were there, how would we choose uh, which one it is? What we did in Algebra 2 was just kind of like, all right, well, when it's less than, it's between, when it's greater than, it's away. And that works most of the time, but not all of the time. So we're going to use a better method now. And what that is, if you look at your graph, um, sorry. Let me get that back and delete that right there. Uh, if you look at your graph, here are your roots of, uh, let me make this smaller and keep it on the page. I know you probably can't, uh, maybe just draw a little little sketch of that to add to your notes. Uh, but this is the, the root of, of 1 that we found, and then this is the root of 3. And you could have done the left bound, right bound, I got 1, and left bound, right bound, it'll tell you 3. My original symbol is less than. And by greater than and less than, we mean of the x-axis. So the x-axis here is really the key. So this is my x-axis. How much of the graph is less than it? Now, less than is just this small section in here. So this is how much of the graph is less than the graph, and less than or equal to, or just less than, what we're really interpreting that is as below the x-axis. And But if it said greater than, then it would have been all of this over here, stopped, 
and then all of this over here, not the stuff in between. The stuff in between these roots is below. And so that's really the key is you're going to look at our graphing calculator to decide, you know, is less than between our roots or is it on the, on the um, outside of our roots. In this case, it's between our roots, and that's why it's between, and, and so it's just 1, 3 in brackets and so on. Let's do another example. All right, solve and write the solution set using interval notation 8x squared plus 13x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is, is type it into the calculator. Because this one is definitely not going to be as easy to factor. You have several options. You can do AC factoring, excuse me, AC factoring if you remember how to do that, which I'm sure I'll, some do, but many don't. Um, you could do, let me, uh, let me zoom in a little bit on that right there. Remember, we can still use those same tools. We'll zoom in and then uh, move over to that area of the graph and zoom in on that, get us a better picture. Um, we can, so we could do AC factoring, we could do the quadratic formula, we could do completing the square, which you guys are pretty good at completing the square, so you could do that. Or you could do uh, left bound, right bound stuff, trace out the roots. I'm going to try that this time. So second calc, two, I'm going to go uh, left bound, enter, right bound, enter, enter, and this root is negative one. So let me write that down. What, one, of my, one of my roots is negative one. So x equals negative 1, and x equals, let's see what that other root is. So I'll move this over here now. Um, so second calc 2, uh, let's go left bound, enter, right bound, enter, enter, negative 0.625. Now that's not going to be irrational because it doesn't go all the way to the end. It's only 3, so when that's the case, Type it in, convert it to a fraction, it is negative 5 eighths. So negative 5 eighths. So these are my two numbers, negative 1 and negative 5 eighths. Here's negative 1, and here is negative 5 eighths. And the graph was doing something like this. So again, the question is, um, you know, what do I want less than, do I want greater than? Uh, let me just get back to my, my, my picture here. All right, so this particular problem wants greater than zero. So when is this graph above the x-axis? So greater than or equal to, we're interpreting as above the x-axis. How much is above the x-axis? Right now I'm above the x-axis. Right now I'm above the x-axis. But when I get to here, when I get to negative 1, it dips below, and then when it gets to negative 5 eighths, it comes back. So it's not what's between the roots, it's what's outside the roots. And so from negative infinity, which is over here, so negative infinity to negative 1 is above, and then negative 5 eighths all the way down to infinity is above the x-axis. Only this part down here between them is below it. So that's why my answer is going to be choice A. It's going to be from negative infinity to negative 1, or from negative 5 eighths to infinity. That's what's greater than 0. If this problem said less than, then this would have been the answer. But it doesn't. It says greater than. Um, so we'll practice this more tomorrow. It is definitely take a little getting used to. Um, again, there's a lot of ways to find the roots. I think getting good practice with the left bound, right bound is helpful, because what we're going to get into in the next video is when we have power three, power four, and there's going to be four or five roots. You know, finding all of them, the, the easiest way is going to be do, to do this. Now, this, this of, co of course, the left bound, right bound won't work if your roots are um, irrational, and that'll be a case where you have no choice but to complete the square and so on. But we'll, we'll practice this more tomorrow.